enjoy this talk given at the Austin Center for Spiritual Living, where we live and teach the principles of science of mind and spirit. For more information, visit austincsl.org. This morning, we're talking, I'm talking, I'm talking every Sunday morning, but this morning we are going to be discussing um, a, a particular spiritual practice that's very dear to my heart. All of the spiritual practices we teach are wonderful, and none is any better than another, but I particularly like to talk about this subject because it's relatively simple and easy and straightforward. It's the topic of affirmations. And the title of this morning's talk is Effective Use of Affirmations. And I've talked about this before. We have have all kinds of information. We have workshops on it. But you know, affirmation is kind of an interesting thing. It's one of the first things that I learned as a young man when I became interested in the science of mind. And uh, I had a lot of questions about it. And over the years, I've come to realize there are three different ways that people tend to approach this idea of affirmations. And the first one is that, well, affirmations are words, and words are powerful. And yet I can remember in one of the first classes that I taught years ago, I've been doing ministry now for, this is my 37th year. And uh, one of the first classes that I taught, I had some friends taking the class. This was over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they came to me after one session and they said, Richard, you talk about affirmations, but affirmations are just words. And words by themselves, they don't do anything. They're just words. And you know, they're right and they're not right. Every year, around the first of the year, either the last Sunday in December or the first Sunday in January, we do a little process here where we sit down and we write out our goals and we go through this process. It's a wonderful thing. And I have, through the years, managed to save some of my goal sheets and absolutely amazed when I go back and look at them how just writing out the words and not even looking at my goal sheet, maybe for a whole year, and then stumbling across it, finding how much has been accomplished. There's a certain amount of power in the words, insofar as the formulating of the words causes you to focus your attention in a very specific way. It's true, the words by themselves don't mean anything unless they are infused somewhat with ideas of understanding, and often it's very useful that there be some feeling of positive expectation behind those words, then they are enormously powerful. That's one way that people approach it, as words that you speak, and words have power. Another way that it's approached by a lot of teachers is that affirmations are a vehicle by which you recondition the mind or re program the mind so that you can condition it the deeper level of mind, the subconscious mind, so that it is sensitive to the opportunities and not only that but sends out a wave of, of uh, what would you call it, like a radio wave, a mental wave that has a frequency associated with it that is going to attach to something and draw it into your life, the law of attraction, but it's by reconditioning the mind and I have a tendency to not be a great proponent of that, but that works also and it's very evident that it works because it's used by a lot of people that are into hypnosis and self-hypnosis and dealing with trauma especially, they will use the techniques of reconditioning or reprogramming. Nothing wrong with that. It does work. Then there's a third way, and the third way or of approaching this, I'm sure there are many ways and you probably think of some yourself, but this third way of looking at it is that the affirmation that you formulate is formulated on the basis of a truth, a truth about you, about the circumstances, the issue with which you are dealing, the truth about perhaps someone else, a truth. And in that 
speaking of this truth. There is a special kind of, I don't know if it's special, but there is a resonance, and we will talk a little bit about how that impacts us. Now, affirmations, very simply, if we were to define an affirmation, it is a statement, a positive statement about something that you would like to be able to see manifested in your life. It's that simple. Now, we can get into a lot of other adjectives and description about it, but it's that simple. It's something that you positively state concerning something that you want to be able to experience in your life. The fact of the matter is, is we really do shape our beliefs according to the words that we speak. When this friend of mine said to me, and he and his wife both approached me, and they said that it's just words, and that's all it is, and there's no power in it. But the fact of the matter is, if you pay attention, the words you speak are reflections of the way you're thinking. So you can gain some insight as to what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what your beliefs are by what comes out of your mouth. So it's a matter of paying attention. But it goes beyond that. Let's look at some affirmations. By the way, in your bulletin today, I prepared this yesterday. I finally decided I'm going to include this on a nice little card that you can take home. It says, Effective Use of Affirmations. Now, don't read it as I'm talking. That make me feel bad. Um, but it's basically what I'm going to be talking about here today. And I am going to refer to this a little bit later because we're going to, uh, we may use it to actually do something together. But let's look at some of the affirmations here. Better look at this one because I changed it on this card than what I had in my notes that I made up earlier. I believe in speaking an affirmation as a statement of truth about who you are. And I'll get to why that's so. But here's an affirmation, the first one on this list. I am made in the image and likeness of God, therefore I am already whole. Do you argue with that idea at all? Maybe there's something that says to you, yeah, maybe other people are that way, but I'm not that way. Do you think that this is a truth? Is it something that you can accept about yourself? And that's the point. If you look at that and say, that is a bunch of you-know-what nonsense, I can't accept that I'm really made in the image and likeness of God, be, be, uh, despite the fact that in every great religious teaching and every great scripture of the world, we have that's those same statements that what God is, I, at the infinite level, I am at this finite level. God is all there is, therefore I must be part of all there is. So therefore I am part of God, the infinite. Um, these are truths that have been passed down through the centuries. If you don't believe them, then what good is it to say an affirmation? And I'll tell you what good it is to say an affirmation. You see, the intuitive level within each one of us, I believe, is that God level. It's the God level of awareness that we can tap into. But we come into this human life experience, I don't know why we were created this way, but the infinite somehow or another decided to incarnate itself as each one of you, and then as each one of us forgot what it was, but deep within it. Am I making sense with you? God decided to come into expression as you, Don, and then God forgot that God is you. In a sense, you forgot who you are, because you are one with that one thing. You know, in the beginning, all there was was God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And everything that was made was an expression of that Word. But we had a ten tendency to forget that. So God kind of played a trick on him or herself, in a sense. But resident within each one of us, at that deeper level, the God level, the intuitive level, there is the truth. We would not 
have the great inspirations and revelations that we have unless there was something within us that could recognize it. So when we speak the truth like that particular statement, I made in the image of God, therefore I am already whole. And we can go through a little reasoning process. God must already be whole because God is all there is. Everything came forth as the expression of that that whole. Therefore, I, as part of that, as an expression of it, must be whole. Now, think about this. There is that place within us, in consciousness, that already embraces the truth. But we have so encrusted it with our delusional ideas, our concepts, our conditionings, that sometimes we don't recognize that. But when we speak the word, it's like projecting a mental wave, just like a radio wave goes out. And when it hits the antenna of some receiver somewhere, it resonates with it and draw, it's drawn into it. And I, this is what happens, I believe, within us. It's like, this is our transmitter. And we transmit a word of truth, a statement of truth. And that wave, that mental wave goes out or spreads from the conscious level of awareness and at the intuitive level, there's something that recognizes it. It resonates with that idea. And it says, yes! And there's a begin beginning of an awakening there. Do you get that idea? Now, if you don't get the idea, that's okay. I, my mind works in the way that I just described this process because, you know, I'm an engineer, scientist type. I like to have little models and, and make sense of things. But if you don't get it and you don't care about it, it doesn't matter. Just recognize there is a rationale that makes this more nearly valid, perhaps. I say more nearly. I think it's valid. But more nearly than perhaps you might have believed before. And if you practice it, you're going to get results. I can't tell you how important this little practice has been to me. And one of the things about affirmations that I like so much is that it's easy to do. There are a few rules associated with doing an affirmation, but it's easy to do. You can do it anytime, do it virtually anywhere. I caution you about doing them aloud, especially anywhere. And anybody can do them with a minimum of training or thinking about it, knowing a few of the rules. But let me give you an example of what not to do. You know, I used to work at Los Alamos. I was on the staff of the Los Alamos National Laboratory for quite a number of years. This is a bunch of scientists I was working with, scientists and top-level engineers and all. And I was getting very much into these kinds of teachings, and I was really impressed with it. And the idea of affirmations, I would go off into a little corner or close my office door and I would speak my affirmation. I'd write out an affirmation and I would speak it aloud because there's a, there's a certain kind of focus of attention when you speak it aloud. If you write it down, if you speak it, if you can, it aloud, and you can hear yourself saying it, you're stimulating three senses right there. Sight, sound, and, and, and touch in the, in the writing. And maybe more than that. And the more senses you can stimulate, if you could eat the affirmation, maybe that's a third <laughs> sense that would work. But I used to go off by myself in various places. And I remember one of the places I liked to go is I'd go into the, the men's restroom. And they had these stalls and everybody else was out there working. I'd go and I'd close the door and I'd, I'd, I'd meditate just a little bit or get the center. And then I'd speak, I am made in the image and likeness of God and therefore all that God is, I am. And one day I walked out of the stall off after doing this and there were some guys standing around just kind of chuckling and <laughs> laughing. I, I, that doesn't do much for your self-confidence or, or f f th th to incur a certain amount of of uh, not what I would call favorable comment. So use a little sense, but you can do them virtually anywhere, even if you just do them silently in your own mind. And I find that this is very useful for me in relating to other people, especially 
when I'm, say, um, I, I'm in an airport or I'm in a meeting. That's it. That's a good one. I'm in a meeting and all of a sudden something is beginning to occur uh, that I don't necessarily agree with. And the person that is saying whatever is being said that I don't agree with, I may not particularly like. This doesn't go for anybody on our board, by the way. Uh, our board. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, why am I looking? Well, you're our boss. You're our board president. But at any rate. Um, I'll just stop and quietly, maybe close my eyes if I don't feel too conspicuous in doing it, but look at the person and think to myself, this person is a God child just as I am. This person is made in the image of God just as I am. And I honor this person's Godness. And you know, this is a wonderful thing to do because you begin to have a sense of resonance with this person. And a lot of people say, yeah, but how do you formulate an affirmation? Sometimes it's, if you, you know, if there's some, there, once in a while there's a person that comes into maybe your life, never mind, because I'm so much more above all this now. But, <laughs> but there might be somebody that you encounter, as I have encountered, that I don't particularly like. And I don't want to be, and I'm not looking at anybody in specifically here. Yet. Or, you know, not the kind of person that you want to be a great friend with necessarily. Um, or you feel so at the time. But if you can look at the person instead and said, when I look into your face, I see the face of God. Now, you don't say that to them. They'll think you're nuts, <laughs> probably. But you think it to yourself. Or you're with a group and you're not very comfortable in this particular group. You'd rather be someplace else. You say to yourself, I have said this, everywhere I look, I see the face of God. God is all there is. That's all I am. That is all anybody here is. Do you see the incredible power in doing something like that? Now, just to look at some of these affirmations on this sheet that you have here. Um, here's one, the third one down. I really, well, I like all of these. I must, because I wrote them, all except the last one. But the third one down. I am a fully awake, vital, immortal, spiritual being, superior to all circumstances. Now, I want us to repeat that together. Get your sheet in front of you. It's the third bullet down. And together, let's repeat it. I am a fully awake, vital, immortal, spiritual being, superior to all circumstances. Do you get a sense or a feeling about that, especially when you hear all of us joining in together in saying this affirmation? How about one as simple as, there is one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. Can you remember that? There is one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. I, I call that the Hail Mary of religious science because it's one of the things we learn right away. Let's say it together. There is one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. Wow. Do you feel the power in that? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with those kind of exclamatory remarks. We ought to do a little bit more of it in our teaching. A lot of people have knee-jerk reaction to hearing things that they did when they were going to that terribly fundamental church, they think, in the past, and they don't want to have anything to do with, in association with that. So we, we keep low tone on that kind of thing. Um, this... Uh, Next to the last one, last bullet is, I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met right now, abundantly. Now, I don't want us to repeat that right now. We are going to repeat that in a moment. We're going to go through a little, little process. But I want to talk a little bit about some of the rules associated with doing affirmations. Number one, 
You want to speak them in the here and the now, as if they are accomplished right now here. You want them positive. You're not going to say, I am a clumsy klutz. That's in the here and now, isn't it? Isn't that what a lot of people do, though? That is not going to resonate with a deep intuitive awareness. What that's going to do is create a conditioned state of awareness that's going to create a barrier between the truth about you and what you are saying to yourself about who you are. Okay? So you want to speak it in the here and the now. It's useful to make them short. Now, a lot of people over the years have said, well, you know, on Sunday mornings we put an affirmation up here and we speak the affirmation together. And couldn't you make that a little bit longer? Well, no. No, you might want to make it longer, but I'm the minister and we're going to do it my way. I, well, you know, this is, uh, I, there's certain prerogatives I have. Uh, I like them short so that I can remember them. Now, I might say it differently from the time I said it before, a little bit. But you make them short, you make them in the here and the now. You speak a truth, not necessarily what you would like to happen in your life. Now, there's nothing wrong with addressing yourself to what your needs are. But I believe in doing affirmations based on something that is intrinsically so about me. And I want to digress just a little bit here. A lot of people come into this teaching, or teachings like it, these so-called positive affirmative approaches to one's understanding one's relationship to the universe. And they are so excited. They find something that opens a new dimension to them and they can let go to being a sinner perennially and, you know, all of the kinds of stuff that they think they were born with and have to overcome and all the work that they're going to have to do in order to be able to be acceptable to God. And they begin to reason that I, I, none of that is true. I don't have to make myself acceptable to God I am one with God already. I don't have to attain union with God. So they find all kinds of things that are good. Not only that, but it's very positive. We look at the opportunities and the possibilities that exist for us rather than talking about all that's wrong about us. And, 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 and this is not a wholesale criticism of all the other disciplines. I have very good friends that are in many of the, well, Catholic and Baptist and Presbyterian and Episcopal and, and all these people. And they're thinking the same way as we are, but they still like their devil. They can't quite let go of the devil and hell and heaven and all of that sort of stuff. And they also think that Jesus is the only way to enlightenment or salvation. And uh, I don't believe in any of that. But they get into the teaching and they realize they can set this aside and begin to approach it from a whole new way. Unfortunately, they reject a lot of things, like they'll reject Jesus. Uh, not Buddha or Lao Tzu or Krishna or any of those, but those are new and they can accept something new that they don't understand at all. And then they give up Jesus, which they do have an understanding of, except they don't. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway... They come into this teaching and they see it through a particular lens, if you will, mental lens. And that is, this is a place where I can be to get something. Nothing wrong with getting. They see it from that what they can get, what they can acquire, this acquisitive nature of the human species, rather than recognizing that this is a teaching about what we can be. And that's vastly different. It's a different dimension. We are here in a process of opening to who we are. And that's why I like to emphasize in doing affirmations 
speaking a truth. Now, a truth about me based in the best understanding that I have. And sometimes it may not be wonderful, but it's the best that I have about who I am. And that is a God child made after the image of that which made all things. So I'm possessed of all of the characteristics of the universe. So can I speak to that in the development of my affirmations? These statements that you make, such as that one that I just gave you, I am one with all there is. Therefore, my every need is met right now abundantly. You say, but that's not true. <laughs> it may be so that I'm one with all that is. But my needs, all of my needs are start, certainly not met right now abundantly. But you see, at the deep level of that truth level, the intuitive awareness level, your needs are met. All you have to do is awaken to it. These statements are more than just written or spoken words. They're expressions of a truth, the knowledge of which resides within you, within each one of us. And when we speak these words of truth, it's like we stir up a remembering. It's like a memory field opens before us. And that's a memory coming right out of our intuitive level. It's always been there. It's not something that we have learned. And this, I believe, is what living out of a state of grace is about. It's not something that is granted to you from outside, even though we've heard it said so often that grace is a gift from God and you cannot earn it. You cannot earn what you already are because you are what you are. You get the distinction here and the idea. And the more conviction that we bring to our speaking the more inner stirring we have till finally the full realization begins to bubble up. The truth begins to become consciously apparent. And this is when our lives begin to reflect this new kind of embracing of truth in our life. Ernest Holmes made a comment, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, made a comment about affirmative prayer in general or any of this kind of affirmative stuff. He says it's not so much what your technique is. The important thing is being able to convey your mind to that point of inner conviction about whatever it is you're directing your attention. I love the quotation that comes from him. It's in the Science of Mind textbook on page 499. I know that because I wrote it down. An ounce of conviction is worth a pound of affirmation. We can speak all the words in the world, but we've got to bring ourselves to the point of conviction. So how do we do that? We do it by practice, by practice, by practice. So I want us... I'm going to tell you about a little technique. The technique works like this. You speak the affirmation. First of all, it's in the here and now. It's positive. It's short. It speaks to a truth about yourself in the way that I do affirmations. If you want to do the subconscious conditioning, that's fine. And that, that, that can work also, especially if you've had a traumatic, traumatic experience. That kind of self-hypnosis can be a very useful process. We can talk about that some other time or privately. But those are the simple rules for affirmations. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met right now, abundantly. You speak that, and you speak it aloud. And then you speak it again. This is one technique. You may use an entirely different technique. You speak it again, a little more softly. And then speak it again, a little more softly. And then speak it again, a little more softly and then maybe you whisper it and maybe you just speak it in your mind and then rest in the awareness of the truth so let's do this with this particular one and we will just go softer and softer 
and softer and see how it feels to us. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met right now abundantly. Let me hear you this first time through. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met right now abundantly. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met right now abundantly. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met now abundantly. Whisper now. I am one with all there is, therefore my every need is met now abundantly. Once more, so softly that you almost can't hear it. Now silently. And now let me hear you again. I am one with all there is. Therefore, my every need is met right now abundantly. Okay. Now actually, the best way for me to do this is when I get softer and softer and softer. I just rest in the silence and let that idea resonate within me. Now, some people look at this and say, that sounds kind of hokey to me. And I don't know that I want to do it. Okay, don't do it. Do something else. A good technique, and I just wrote this down in, in, the, in the very bottom of that, uh, that page, the first page there. What do I have on the second page? Oh, that's the process that we just went through. Um, at the, at the bottom of the second page here. If you have difficulty saying this, staying with this process, stand in front of a mirror. And I do this occasionally. I stand in front of the mirror, and sometimes it's kind of funny. I have to laugh. I stand in front of the mirror and I said, Richard, you are the very expression of God. Well, comb your hair. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have any hair. You know, <laughs> Richard... You are the loving expression of God in everything that you do, everywhere that you go, and with everyone that you meet. You are none other than God expressing as you. And you look yourself in the eye. You can't help, I can't help but smiling. Sometimes I laugh at it, and it's very effective. Another thing to do with affirmations. Write them out. Now, you'll become very proficient at working with affirmations and, and just, you know, they'll come off the top of your head. But to begin with, write them out. And then write them several times. Go onto the computer and, you know, duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it, and get a whole bunch of little cards or slips of paper. Put one on your mirror. Put one on your, your uh, what do you call it, your, your rearview mirror in the cart. Well, that might not be too, too, too good. But in your wallet, and, oh, I meant to bring my planner this morning to show you. I, have, I open my, my planner, and uh, I, I don't have a... Uh, an iPhone or a smartphone, you know, one of these kinds of things. I still use the old planner. I do have a cell phone that I turned off this morning. But, and I have an affirmation there. I open to the page where I have a little divider where I'm working for the month and the day and so forth. And I have another affirmation there. And I open to another place, I have another affirmation. And so I have an opportunity to read these occasionally and remind myself of the truth of myself. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to know about affirmations. Now, all you have to do is do it. Are you willing to do that? Yes. Let me give you a challenge. Take this card and pick an affirmation from it. You don't even have to write your own. You can if you want to. I give you permission. But pick an affirmation and repeat it, say, three times a day. When you wake up in the morning... Sometimes during the day and once in the evening. And then let me know at the end of a week, the next time you see me to talk with me, let me know, has it been meaningful for you to do this? And in the meantime, 
Let's come to center. Oh, the one last one. I love this is one from Meister Eckert. I did not read this. I write this. To me, all things are possible because I am one with that to which all things are possible. The 13th century mystic said that. So let's come to center now. Relax into the moment. Know that there is one power and one presence that is in and through all things. That in the beginning all there was, was this thing. We call it God. The scientist talks about going back in time as far as they can possibly go. And they come to a point of singularity is the term that's used. Out of which everything evolved from nothing. And it doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't make sense to them either. Except that it fits their model. And what they haven't considered is consciousness. Pure consciousness in the beginning was that creative intention, the word behind all things. And it expressed itself in all of creation and it continues to unfold in this creative evolutionary process that we are a part of. I am a part of the unfolding nature of the universe expressing according to its own design. That is the one life, the one life that is perfect, the one life that is my life now, as is everyone here. And in the realization of that, I know wholeness is expressed in every area of my life and I am healed. All there is is God. God is, therefore, I am. And I'm grateful that, that this is so. I rejoice that it's so. I know that it is so. And together we declare, and so it is.